Hey YouTube, it's your boy Michael again, coming back at you with a, another reading vlog. In this video, I'm going to be doing a reading vlog of the series Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Shusterman? I'm gonna say Shusterman. Um, it starts with Scythe, goes into Thunderhead, book two, and then finally The Toll. I just got this book series maybe three weeks ago. I was over at Barnes & Noble and they had a buy one get one half off sale, um, so I picked up Scythe. I realized as I was reading it, I thought it was a different book, because like in 2018 I went through a phase where I was reading a bunch of synopsises. Synopsises? Synopi? I don't know. A bunch of book synopsises is what I'm going to say. Um, where, for whatever reason, I thought that Scythe was a different book, and the different book I thought it was didn't really appeal to me, so I didn't read it. Um, but this time around, I decided to go ahead and at least try to read the first chapter while I was at Barnes & Noble, and I was hooked instantly. One thing that I think Neil does really, really well, and in fact, my first highlight was literally on page six. He just, he does a really good job of subverting your expectations immediately. So, the whole concept of the Scythe series is that the world that they live in, it's basically, it's its a utopia. You know what? I'll just read the back. A world with no hunger, no disease, no war, no misery. Humanity has conquered all these things and has even conquered death. Now Scythes are the only ones who can end life, and they are commanded to do so in order to keep the size of the population under control. So, yeah, immediately I'm thinking Grim Reaper, <laughs> a skeleton with a, you know, with a scythe and a black robe. But on page six, and I know that Neil thought this, he wrote talking about what color of robes that scythes could wear. So he says, Black was an absence of light, and scythes were the opposite. Luminous and enlightened, they were acknowledged as the very best of humanity, which is why they were chosen for the job. That right there is what made me buy this book. So if you guys saw my last video, I'll go ahead and link it up right up here for you. You know that I've already read Scythe. I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. I... Uh, annotated it for the first time. It's the first book I've ever annotated and I couldn't wait for this video to start <laughs> or to start filming this video to read Thunderhead. So right now I am only 51 pages in and I'm really enjoying it. So something I've been thinking about a lot with how I want this YouTube channel to run is handling spoilers. And I think I've come up with a compromise that will allow me to talk about spoilers but will give you the option to not deal with them. So I'm going to put chapters down on the timeline so that I can talk about the spoilers for people that want to watch it. But if you're not really that interested and you want to go just kind of surface level, if you haven't read it yet or something, then you'll have that option as well. So this channel is a work in progress and I'll be trying new things to kind of find my style as I figure out what I like. For spoilers for Scythe Book 1, really you're not going to get spoiled. So, um, the main characters, Citra Terranova and Rowan Damish? 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 I like Damish better, so I want to say Rowan Dam Damish. Um, are basically chosen to be um, apprentices of Scythe Faraday. So about maybe a third of the way through, 40% of the way through, deals with Citra and Rowan being Scythe Faraday's apprentice. The problem with this setup is that Scythe Faraday has one ring to give to his apprentices. These rings signify that the person that wearing them is a Scythe and is able to prevent someone's gleaning or death for a year if they deem it so. They have the, per they have the person that they deem kiss the ring, that DNA off off of the kiss goes into a database and they can't be gleaned for a year. It's a physical token showing, aside from everything else, it proves that you are who you say you are. But there's only one ring and two apprentices. So the first 40% of the book is a lot of training, training arcs, learning about how to be a scythe, how to kill, all this stuff. And then, right about 40% of the way through, they learn that Scythe Faraday has gleaned himself. Now, Scythes um, are immortal, but three ways that they can die. One is they glean themselves. The Thunderhead, which we'll talk about here in just a second, doesn't revive them, so they are just gone. The second way is through fire. Generally, that's because there's nothing left. And then, as discussed in the uh, second book, the other way to kill or to glean a scythe permanently is through acid. After 
Scythe Faraday gleans himself. Citra finds herself with Scythe Marie Curry, and Rowan ends up with Scythe Goddard, who is this really flamboyant, kind of just full of himself kind of Scythe. He wears robes of, uh, I think it's navy, encrusted with diamonds. Um, and he's taught, he's all about the, sh the show of gleaning. He loves, he revels in all the attention that he gets. He gets he loves he loves it all he gleans more for sport which is the problem with with him scythes do have a quota that they have to meet every month most scythes just hit that number and call it good um, but the way that goddard operates is that he basically re-simulates man-made disasters like a plane crash he just gleans an entire plane because he feels like it he just he does mass mass casualties whereas other scythes don't do that and there's a bit of a old school way of thinking about it versus a new school and Goddard is leading the charge on the new school where he f basically sees himself as a god and needs to be treated as such. As Citra and Rowan are off on their own adventure uh, training with different scythes, Citra learns the more compassionate side of gleaning and also learns the importance of showing empathy and being nice more or less to the victims families afterwards. Goddard, on the other hand, teaches Rowan how to be a gleaning machine. Has Rowan do all sorts of fairly heinous uh, exercises on alive subjects, but because death is no longer really a thing, the AI that controls everything about this world, there is no government, there is no anything really without the AI. Um, so the Thunderhead knows that when somebody dies, they call it deadish. Because what happens is the the Thunderhead will send a drone to pick up the, the body. It gets sent to a revival center. A couple days later, the damage is reversed, and they're back to the way that they were. Which is really kind of cool, and I, I really like how Neil has built this world out. Uh, one thing that I also thought was interesting uh, was another highlighted part. So at one point, Citra and Marie are talking to each other, and earlier during the during the trials during the training of the scythes marie asks citra what's the worst thing that she's ever done citra ends up lying but you find out that the worst thing that she ever did was that she um, as a kid pushed one of her friends into a moving bus on purpose more or less to see if she could do it citra got off scot-free and her friend ended up getting revived and everything was a-okay but marie says you realize that in the age of mortality, aka before death was solved, you realize that in the age of mortality, you would have been treated much more differently. Citra then replies, if it was the age of mortality, I wouldn't have done it. Citra told her with confidence, because I know she wouldn't be back. Pushing her then would have been more like gleaning. Then Marie says, they had a word for it. Murder. Citra chuckled at the archaic word. That's funny, like a bunch of crows. And just, that's like, just a little taste of what Neil brings to the table here. The book ends with there was a competition only two apprentice, apprentices only one can get the ring you you find out that faraday did not glean himself he faked his own uh death and is hanging out basically over in panama doing his own thing so several times a year all the sites in their region gather up for what they call a conclave the final conclave of the year had the results of Citra's and Rowan's competition. Without going into all the details, because I'm trying not to spoil everything, Citra wins the ring and she then goes on to change her name to Scythe Anastasia. We're moving on to Thunderhead now, and can we just talk about how awesome these, these covers are? They look so good. I love the color, and if you look closely, I'll show you with this one. Come on, focus. Focus, there we go. So if you look really closely right here, on the other side is also a face. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. I didn't notice it until I was like halfway through the book. But yeah, this is awesome. I loved Scythe. Um, right now at this point um, in Thunderhead, it's just kind of continuing on where Scythe left off. Um, since Rowan didn't win the competition, he's not technically a Scythe. However, he kind of is. So every chapter begins with these little journal entries from different characters. This one is from the Thunderhead, that AI itself. One thing I did mark down is that it it says in this uh, in the journal entries that I would end my own existence rather than crush it. I don't know about that. I don't believe that. So on the cover, 
um, Citra, also known as Scythe Anastasia. Her robe color is turquoise. And Rowan, who has now decided to go ahead and hunt down all of the sites that he deems as immoral, much like Goddard, um, he actually wears black robes, even though black is not allowed. He also calls himself Scythe Lucifer, which I thought was pretty dope. And come to find out, he has Goddard's ring. He stole it from him when he killed him. The head Scythe of the entire mid-American Scythedom is speaking with the Thunderhead through a proxy. And at one point, the proxy says, from... The Thunderhead to the High Scythe Xenocrates? Xenocrates? I don't know how to say his name. It says, The Nimbus Agent wishes to remind Your Excellency that while the Scythum customarily ordains new Scythes in its conclaves, it is merely a custom, not a law. Rowan Damish completed his apprenticeship and is now in possession of a Scythe's ring. The Thunderhead feels this to be adequate grounds to consider Rowan Damish a Scythe, and therefore will continue to leave his capture and subsequent punishment entirely in the hands of the Scythum. While the Thunderhead can't speak to the Scythes because there's a separ separation between Scythe and Thunderhead, it seems that the Thunderhead has found a way to get around that, which seems to be what it likes to do, is get around its own laws. Um, anyway, I've rambled on for long enough, but I've got some parts coming in for my Mustang. Um, I've got a project car and it needs some TLC, but they're not here yet, so so I figured that I'd go ahead and read some Thunderhead, um, let you know where I'm at, check in, and uh, we'll go from there. So thank you for watching this really long-winded intro and my decent enough attempt at a summary of Scythe. I know I'm leaving a lot out. I don't want to spoil too much. I want you guys to read it, but let's go ahead and start with Thunderhead and um, I'll read until my parts come in. We'll work on the staying a little bit and then we'll go from there. So I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, so change of plans. I'm not kidding. As soon as I stopped recording that intro and then um, got ready to read, the FedEx guy showed up. So we're gonna work on the Mustang instead for a little bit, but I will uh, I'll show you here in just a sec what the Mustang looks like, and then we'll go from there. All right, so here's the Mustang in all of its glory. It's a 2001. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it's a V6, and it's an automatic. Um, but I'll go ahead and let my friend Regular Car Reviews explain how I feel about my V6 automatic Mustang. Is it the V8? No, it is not. Is it a manual? Not that either. Do I care? Absolutely not. Today's problem is ignition wires. The one going over to cylinder three done melted off. It was causing a misfire. So instead of replacing one, I'm replacing all of them. change the spark plug lines and now we're going to start it and hopefully it doesn't blow up. One eternity later. Good evening. Um, it is like a week later um, since I spoke to any of you all last. I'm really sorry. I'm, it's hard for me to get used to vlogging all the time and like carrying a camera and even remembering that I have a YouTube channel because it's so new. So it's just an adjustment period. And I thought that I would have more time to read this week, but. Uh, my job has been pretty busy lately, so I haven't been able to do that. But I figured I'd give you guys a check-in. Um, right now, I am currently on page 124, chapter 13 of Thunderhead. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. I know, I feel like I say that with every book that I read, but I really am enjoying it. Um, as of right now, there was a threat against... Um, Scythe Marie and Scythe Anastasia. Somebody had booby-trapped a street and 
tried to blow them up, but a new character, Grayson, stopped them. Um, so it's interesting to see how the Thunderhead is getting around its own laws. I gotta cut this short. It looks like my little guy just woke back up. So I'm gonna go put him back to bed, cook up a little bit of dinner for me, and then we're gonna crack on and read a little bit, and uh, I'll check back in in a sec. All right, good morning. Um, as you can tell by the little montage, uh, it's the next day. Um, I did get about 70 pages read last night. This part of the book is kind of interesting because it's setting, I can tell it's just setting up a lot for what'll likely be a very explosive ending to the book. Um, I'm about, you see my bookmark, I'm a little bit less than halfway through, maybe 40%, but I'm gonna keep reading. Um, I've got my day job that I've gotta to do today, but um, I'll try to find little times throughout the day that I can read this and I will update you guys. I'm gonna be real, I don't know when, but for you it'll be a couple seconds, for me it could be a couple days, so. Hi friends, um, I'm done with work for the day and got a little bit of time to kill uh, going to a baseball game tonight, but I've got time to myself now. I've got my lo-fi. Focus, brother. So yeah, I've got some time to myself now, so I thought I'd go ahead and read. I'll update you all whenever I can, so catch you in just a sec. Hey friends, um, welcome to my car. Um, it's a couple days since I last um, updated you all. Um, I am about maybe 60% of the way through the book now. Um, the intrigue is there. The thing that I struggle with, especially in series, is the middle book tends to be a little too set up and a little bit too slow for my taste. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Um, so, you know, this one was a little bit of a struggle, but we're getting there. Um, things are definitely happening. Now, I don't want to spoil too much because, like I said, I want you all to read it, but things are definitely happening. Um, there's a character that does a thing that made me realize something about myself, and that was, he kind of does the, I'm gonna go do my own thing and save everybody by myself thing, which was what I loved as like a kid, like <laughs> 16 year old me, 20 year old me, heck, even 25 year old me would have loved that this character did the thing by himself, but he's now kind of gotten captured and is kind of screwing it up for everybody now so you know i'm starting to kind of realize that maybe i'm starting to outgrow young adult fiction to where i get like too invested to the story i don't know it's something i'm trying to learn about myself anyway but so anyway uh we're going go-karting today so i'm here really early i left I, I was excited i felt like i was six years old again just like super looking forward to something again for the first time in a while so we're gonna go go-karting. I brought my own helmet because uh, the helmets that they have here stink and are really nasty and are the visors all cut up. So I'll get some footage of that. I've got a GoPro mount for the helmet, so it'll be nice and cool. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna read more Thunderhead while I wait for everybody to get here. And uh, we'll just go from there. <laughs>
so yeah, it's the next day. Um, I read literally one chapter of this before my friends showed up for kart racing, um, and it dropped a bombshell. <laughs> so things are super happening now. Um, I am on page 309 currently, and there is 504 pages in the book. I've got 200 pages left to go, and I'm going to try my hardest to get it done tonight. Um, it's currently 7 o'clock-ish. Um, so I think I can do it. I've just got to get some some good music going some reading sprints done I think I'll get it done. I can give you my final words or my <laughs> I can give you my final thoughts on Thunderhead and we can start the toll. This is happening so buckle up because we're gonna finish this bad boy tonight Alright, so it's uh, several hours later and I have finished Thunderhead and I told myself I wasn't going to do ratings anymore, but this is another five star. Um, honestly, I was talking mad smack to, about it 60% of the way in. The last 40% of that book was absolutely incredible and the ending was spectacular. Um, there's tons of questions. I cannot wait to get back to the toll. Uh, this series is up there with the best young adult series that I've ever read, including the likes of what I would call maybe some of the best young adult series ever, which would be The Hunger Games. But yeah, I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm sure there's other YouTube videos out there that spoil everything in this series. But if you like young adult, if you like good young adult, you need to read this series. Um, I'll be back with uh, the start of the toll. I'm giving myself only a week to finish it, which might seem a little bit quick, but I gotta know what happens. Um, but right now it's really late and I'm really tired and uh, I'll be going to bed now, but trust me, I cannot wait to start the toll. So I'll, uh, I'll check in when I start the toll. Hey everybody, it's a couple days later. Um, I am reading the toll. And at right, right now I am 146 pages in. It's definitely keeping me on my toes because um, we're going through several different POVs and several things are happening all at once, which is really adding to the intrigue and makes me want to know what's happening. Um, one thing that's kind of nice um, is that I actually got the Kindle version from my library. So I'll be able to read that overnight and stuff like that. Um, with big fat books like this, and especially, this really isn't even that fat, but with big books like this, um, and especially the ending of series that I get really into, I have this like weird thing where I get anxious as I'm holding what I have left to read. Um, and I keep just thinking like I need to read faster so I can figure out what's going on with the story. Um, so I'm going to switch over to my Kindle for now. This way I, I don't have to, I can just get absorbed in the in the book, let the anxiety of how much I have left to read just kind of dissipate. Book two left on a huge cliffhanger and so now we're kind of picking up the pieces from what's left of lots of different things really. Um, like I said, I don't want to spoil it, but I'm very much enjoying it so far. Um, in fact, in my in my shift today, I didn't have a lot to do, so I got over 100 pages read. I feel like the whole series reads pretty quick once I get um, invested and locked into the story. I'm thankful that the Kindle version finally became available for me because I was... I almost bought my own copy, even though I have a physical copy, because I just wanted to read it on my Kindle, and now I have it. It's coming up on July 4th weekend. Hopefully I'll have more time to myself to actually read and get something done. Uh-oh, I'm about to run out of memory. Okay, um, I originally gave myself a week to finish this, but I don't think I'm going to get there, but I'm going to finish it as fast as I can so that I can get this uploaded and sent off to you all. So my camera is about to die though, um, so we're going to just keep rolling with this and uh, I will get back to you here in just a little bit. i to make this quick because my camera is about to die, but um, I am, according to my Kindle, I am 35% of the way in through the toll, and I think I'm just hitting a bit of a roadblock. I really, I don't know. 
it's really disappointing because right now I'm just struggling and I'm kind of bored with it. Um, I've done nothing but exclusively read this series for like a month and I think I just need something to clean my palate. Um, so I'm going to take a little break from it, maybe for a day or so, just to read something else and try um, a different genre altogether. I'm going to make a YouTube video about it though, so you'll see that as well um, when this video comes out. Several different timelines, a bunch of characters to remember who they are and what their motivations are and stuff, and I don't know, it's just... I mean, you know, he's keeping us in the dark, which is good for some people, but not for me. I'm hoping that I'm towards the end of whatever the setup part is. We'll take a small little break, um, and then we will continue, and I will update you at the 50% mark whenever that is. Um, but yeah, we're just we're taking a break, and we're going somewhere else. Alright, good morning, everybody. Um, so, yeah, the, about that break that I was going to take from the toll... Right. Um, so what ended up happening was I read uh, 40 pages of another book that I'm making a video for, but I'm not going to tell you in this video. Um, but even then, just the change up in writing style was was pretty good. Um, but even after reading just the intro and getting kind of into that book, I still wanted to know what was going on in the toll. And what I realized was I wasn't bored of the toll or Neil's writing, I was just a little burnt out. And what you have to realize is that, and I'll put up my uh, Goodreads graphic up here again, is that I'm not really used to reading this much because this is the most uh, books I've read in a year, like in my life and it's just not something that I'm used to doing. So reading three books from the same author in quick succession uh, made it really difficult for me to stick with it because again it's just not something that I'm used to doing. I was a little bit too harsh in saying that I was bored, it was just that I was burnt out. But the little break that I took, I took a whole day off of reading and then I read another book for a little bit and I, I still found myself wanting to know what happens at the end. So yesterday alone I read 35% of this book. Um, according to my Kindle, I am 65% of the way through. I'm on chapter 37. I have some mixed feelings about it. I'm hoping that the last 35% of this book kind of redeems the first 65% <laughs> a little bit to me. Honey? Um, this was something that I was concerned about was that it was going to be kind of a disappointing finish. And I'm not saying that it is right now, but it could be. And that would really suck because I had such high praise for the first two books. And if this one is not that, then that'll, that'll kind of just suck for me personally. I'm probably going to have to end up rereading either the series or uh, the last book at least. Because in, at least in the toll, there's several... Uh, timelines going on, several different characters to keep track of, and I've kind of gotten lost a couple times, so it will probably behoove me to go ahead and just reread it at some point. I am enjoying it still. It's weird because, like, even though I have all this criticism for it, I'm still really enjoying it. I still am finding that whenever I put the Kindle up to go to bed, I, I like, I want to read more of this, even though part of me feels like I'm not getting what I wanted out of it. It's a weird feeling that's going on, but... It is the next day. In the previous clip I said I was 65% of the way done, and I read a little bit more before the fireworks and everything started. I got to 75%. As of right now, I'm here. About 60 pages to the end. We'll see how this book ends, because it's going to have a massive impact on my overall feelings for the series. I want to know what happens, and I think I came into this book the wrong way. Um, especially with the explosive ending of Thunderhead, I thought that the toll would do the same. In a series where it begins in Scythe with subverting expectations, I shouldn't have been surprised that Neil knew that that's exactly what was going to happen and went with a totally different tone, a totally different direction. I think I'm gonna have to take probably like a day or so to like really get my, my thoughts squared away on how I feel whenever I finish this. All right, I'm actually reading on my Kindle. Um, so we'll see. I don't, it's weird because it's like, I may not, this book didn't go and hasn't gone the way that I expected, but I don't want it to end. So we'll see. Um, but I will record some more and then, um, either it'll be tonight or tomorrow before I give my 
final thoughts and can finally upload this really, really long reading vlog. Uh, but thank you for sticking around to the end. Um, so let's finish this together. The time has come. I have finished t the toll. And with that, I've finished the Scythe series. I, I don't know how I feel. Um, I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit. And either tonight or tomorrow, I'll give you my final thoughts on the series. Because it certainly went in a direction that I wasn't anticipating. And now I have to kinda process everything. Alright, so it's a couple hours later. Um, I've had some time to organize my thoughts and just get ready to tell you all what I thought. So, the first thing I'd like to do is talk about the Toll as, a, as an individual book. Um, so with like 50 pages left, I realized that what my expectations for the book were completely off base. And I realized, again, a little bit too late, but that's okay, um, that what I really wanted or what I was thinking that the Toll would be is the Hunger Games. Uh, but the third book, Mockingjay, is just action, 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 a little bit of a break to breathe, and then action, 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 and then resolution. And that's not what this book is. In fact, it felt like a good 400 pages or so of the 620 some odd pages of this book were just set up. I was expecting action, 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 and I didn't get it. And so my initial reaction was to be disappointed, but as I thought about it, it, it occurred to me that not everything has to be The Hunger Games. Every young adult trilogy doesn't have to end or emulate The Hunger Games. And that's just something that I need to change in my own head. So uh, after thinking about it for a while, it's not my favorite book of the series, but it was still good. I like how it gave us a mix of concrete endings for certain characters and a little bit of ambiguity for the others. So thinking back on the series as a whole, uh, what Neil Shusterman, Shusterman? Shusterman? I'm gonna say Shusterman. What Neil Shusterman does is that he subverts the reader's expectations. Starting with five pages in where he talks about how Scythe can wear any uh, robe color that they want, but it can't. they can't wear black because that's considered inappropriate. He knows what the what the reader's going to assume going into the series and he just turns it on its head. And I believe that that's exactly what he did going from Thunderhead into the Toll. Is that he knew that leaving it on a, on a cliffhanger and waiting for, or making people wait for the next one to come out, they would want action right off the bat and he didn't do that. That's not to say that it was boring, but that's exactly why I thought it was boring. But to speak to its strength is that even though I took a break and I said I was going to take like a week off, I took a one day off and I read another book that I'm going to be doing for um, another video here soon. And I read like 40 pages of that, but even whenever I was done, it just kind of like left my brain because I was thinking about the toll and I wanted to know what happened. And I think that's a mark of Neil's really good world building, storytelling, everything just built together his character development his characters in general introducing brand new ones in a third book and the last book of a trilogy is a really bold call and he pulled it off really well I came in again expecting the Hunger Games and it's okay for it to not be the Hunger Games because again if everything is the Hunger Games then it gets kind of boring. Like I said, it's not my favorite of the series, um, but I really do think I'll end up rereading it at some point, and maybe just rereading the whole series, because despite my reservations and what I thought, or my critiques of the book or the series as a whole, it's up there with my favorite young adult series, such as Six of Crows, that duology, um, and The Hunger Games. It's up there. If I had to call it, it's probably my second or third favorite series that I've ever read. And that's, you know, some very high praise for it because what he was able to build out in this three book series, yeah, like 1500 pages-ish, he built out a world that I felt like I could live in. I felt like I was there 
in every scene and it takes a really good author to do that and for him to go against the grain of a fast-paced story to a little bit more setup and really like attacking the central pillars of the ideas of this society instead of just going like here's the big bad baddie he's gonna fight the main character and one of them's gonna win he decided to have a commentary on politics religion you know, what power does to people, all of that stuff was wrapped up in this nice bow. And he tied some loose ends, he left some set up for the reader to decide, um, and I really liked it. The more that I sit with it, the more that I think about it, the more that I kind of just try to like turn it over in my head and see it from different angles, you know, the more that I'm able to see what he was doing when I was kind of ignoring it because I wanted to I wanted to know what happened and that's why I think I need to reread it because now that I know what what happens in the story I can then pay more attention to what's going on you know on the on the outskirts of the story it's kind of like whenever you watch a movie that you really like and you watch it again you notice a bunch of stuff that you missed the first time so that brings me to the series as a whole um, like I've alluded to and like I said it's one of my favorite young adult series that I've ever read and I would put it up there with like the likes of The Hunger Games as some of the best young adult uh, dystopian type fantasy, urban fantasy, I don't know what to call it, but a dystopian style series. It's one of the best. And it's one of those that I think I'm just going to not hear any negative stuff about because I like it. Everyone has those series and this is one of mine. So, And I know that I've given rankings to every book in the series and talked about it. So I'm going to subvert your expectations and not give you a rating. What I'm going to tell you is that if you can, get these from a library, borrow them from your friend, get them on online, and read it. I promise if you like young adult um, sci-fi or fantasy or even you really, you really like the Hunger Games, give this a shot. It's really, really good. It's a it's a series that respects your time as well. It reads really quickly. I don't think that you're not that you're not gonna like it. So that being said, we're done with our first book series. I do apologize that it took me, what, a month almost to put this together, but like I said, I work a full-time job. I'm, I'm a dad, I've got a wife and all that stuff, and I'm trying to adjust to the content creation as far as YouTube is concerned. I'll try to be better, but no promises. I do the best that I can anyway, so. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching and for enjoying the content. At least I hope you enjoyed it, and I will be back with another video hopefully soon. Um, I imagine that I'm gonna go ahead and finish this next book pretty quickly. Um, I'm hopping on the hype train before it leaves the station. <laughs> but yeah, if you're still here and you listen to my rambling for however long this video is going to be, thank you so much. Make sure to like and subscribe. That really helps a new channel like me out. You guys have no idea. Like, subscribe, comment, all that other stuff. You all are beautiful. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye!